We are pleased to have you here. And um, so this is, the big, this is the first session of a parent series and hopefully you'll take advantage of all of them. So, and you could see, sometimes people only see the top one, like the first session, but if you click on the first session to get a ticket, you'll see all the other ones. I know a lot of people have missed the fact that that's how you gotta have to do it. But I would just like to say without further ado that this is um, about giving you some advice on how to make your home environment the best for your child to work from home and some tips on how to make that a school at home environment that works best. So without further ado, I am going to introduce you to Carolyn Redpath, who is, well, you're BCBA, but PhD too, and you have a whole bunch of letters after your name. So, and, and also Tanisa Tur Turnbaugh, who also um, does a behavioral, BCBA behavioral care for, for youth. And they're filled with a wealth of information on how to make study at home easier. And with, take it away. Thank you so much. I appreciate everybody coming on a Wednesday night. I know this is the time that you're busy trying to get your family fed and get ready for the next day, not to mention we have CNN going on right now with all kinds of news erupting. Um, I have a, um, a PowerPoint that I want to show. I'm having trouble with my voice. I've had a throat procedure, so I've audio taped the slides, but I'll stop them in between and entertain questions. I just didn't want my voice to completely give out before the end. Gloria, you need to um, enable me to share my screen. So if you can make me the host temporarily, um, and let me share my screen. I hope it works as co-host because if I make you host, I can't. Gloria, if you hit the little like shield, there's a little shield next to, oh, there you there go. go. Oh, worked. that worked? Okay. That worked. Okay. I'm just going to, oops. Okay. So many of our children are struggling to either go to school or to participate virtually. Some are inconsistently logging on, some are logging on but not paying attention, and some are completely missing in action. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead. If I noticed if you can't see the slides because of the pictures, you can scoot everybody over to the side. I just had to do that because it was annoying to me. So if that's annoying to you, just scoot them over. The coronavirus pandemic has made this even harder and posed new challenges for all of us. Parents have had to make tough decisions about whether to send their child into school or opt for virtual learning. Working from home is hard for adults and it's a whole new challenge for children. We weren't prepared to learn in a whole new different way. How many of the you- Coronavirus all pandemic has made this hard. How many of you all are trying to work from home at the same time that you are trying to uh, homeschool your kids. Is anybody balancing that out? I think it's, it's just a particularly hard time right now. Um, it's just added so many layers of frustration. There are many reasons why children stop wanting to participate and it can be tricky to turn it back around. I know I've been there. When we moved to Connecticut, my daughter was very, very anxious about the change. She was new in town and didn't know anyone. She was different and she was bullied. She stopped wanting to go to school. Some days I would spend two hours trying to coax her out the door, only to be greeted at school with scorn for being late. I remember hearing Mrs. Redpath, perhaps you don't know that here in Connecticut, children come to school on time. At the same time, I had started a new job and was feeling great pressure not to be late to work. The cycle began of both of us panicking in the mornings. It wasn't until I found someone at the school to really listen to me that the situation turned around. This teacher actually came out to our home and let our daughter know how much she looked forward to seeing her in school. She let her know that if she began to feel anxious, 
that she was there for her as a safe place to go. It made all the difference in the world. We want all our children to go to school. We know that attendance, either in person or virtually, is a key to success. If our children aren't participating now, they are at risk of lagging behind or giving up. Today, I want to talk about some strategies that you can use to build participation, as well as maintain your relationship with your child and a little bit of your sanity. There are many reasons why children stop Parents shouldn't have to go it alone in helping their children with attendance and with virtual learning. Parents are already playing well. Parent, teacher, worker, caregiver. Most parents have never been taught how to teach school and how to use virtual learning platforms. Schools are under pressure right now, too, because of high absentee rates. This results in school staff putting pressure on parents to get their kids to participate. But parents and teachers need to work together to understand the factors that are going on. Reach out if you're having technical troubles um, for help with accessing or finding out how to use the classroom technology. Some parents are dealing with trying to help their child with anxiety and worry in these uncertain times. Some children are just anxious about the virtual format or have overall anxiety because of the pandemic. They may have sick family members, they may have lost relatives or friends in the community. They worry that they won't have friends or they won't be able to stay caught up and thus give up. Reach out to the school guidance counselor or social worker for assistance. One of the most important issues is that student-teacher relationships may not have had the chance to blossom virtually. Children rely on knowing their teacher and knowing that their teacher looks forward to seeing them in class. If they feel disconnected from the teacher in the class, it may affect their interest in going online. Encourage your child to communicate back and forth with their teacher. The more they get to know each other, the better. Finally, some children become overwhelmed and shut down and need more specific assistance. School psychologists and behavior analysts can help children with daily structure, motivation, and problem solving. In addition to being a parent, as a behavior analyst, I'm a bit of a behavioral detective. We believe that kids will do well when they can. Our job is to find out what is getting in their way when they're struggling. Behavior analysts get called when teams are stuck in their efforts to help children. The adults are usually frustrated, the kids are discouraged, and sometimes the relationships have become power struggles. We're called in when the usual efforts haven't worked. Our job is to take a good, honest look at what's happening and to develop a full understanding of what's contributing to the problem. Through listening and open lines of communication, we can begin to address the child's needs. As we begin to look at what's happening, there are some things our children need in order to do their best. They need to be cared about. They need to develop relationships with caring people at school. They need the necessary skills. They need to understand what is wanted of them. And uh, these skills could be academic, social, or technological. They need help with logistical issues. They need the equipment to do the job. They need a supportive structure that makes it easy for them to get through the day. They need reward for their efforts. Rewards come in many forms, and for some children, it may be more rewarding not to participate unless we intervene. They need to feel safe and secure. These are scary times. For some children, just going into a virtual classroom is a new and frightening experience. So problems with attendance and participation are no different, but there's some ways that we can help. One strategy that you can use is to make contact with your te child's teacher proactively. Let the teacher know what your situation is, whether you need help with connectivity, with materials, whether your work situation conflicts with being home to be able to assist your child with their, their online school work, what you need from the school. Teacher's job is to help your child 
benefit as much as possible from their educational situation. Ask about how virtual materials are stored. How do you find out about assignments? How do you find out about work that's turned in? Talk with your teacher about new behavior patterns. You're seeing at home. Chances are they're seeing it with other children in the class as well. Find out about what's expected, what's due, and when it's due. Ask them to walk you through any tech questions you have about getting onto the class format. Teachers can even go on and look at your screen if you share your screen and point you through how to access the lessons. This is not something that we, we automatically know how to do, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with asking to be taught. Next, we wanna see if our kids lack the skills necessary to cope with what's being asked of them. You can find out some of these answers by asking your child, some by watching them do things, and some by asking the teacher. First of all, we need to look at their academic skills. If they were struggling before COVID, they may need some extra assistance in some of their subject areas. If they qualified for additional support at school, that same assistance can still be available online. We need to look at their skills at technology. If they don't understand how to access or use the platform, ask a school staff member to walk them and you through it. Some children attend the classes, but don't know how to turn their assignments in online. Make sure that they get help in knowing how to do this as well. Do they have the necessary organizational skills? Do they know when their classes are and have a way of telling time to be there on time? You may want to help them set up a schedule and set an alarm for classes. The same thing for when work is due. Help your child write down due dates on their calendars. Do they know how to find out about what their assignments are? If they miss the first days of virtual learning, they may have missed the directions. Ask for the teacher to review this if you or your child have questions. Can they cope with seeing the entire list of assignments due at once? This is a uh, a challenge for a lot of students um, with online platforms, instead of seeing just what's due for one day, they may be seeing many, many days at once. Um, teachers can help prioritize lists for students so that they aren't so overwhelmed. Does your child know how to ask for help online? Some teachers want them to use the chat box, some want them to raise their hands, some want them to speak up, and some want an email outside of class. Find out what's the best way to ask for help from your child's teacher. Finally, older children get more complex assignments. In class, teachers often work with them on breaking down those assignments into many deadlines. This step may get missed when working online or when going back and forth between live and virtual learning. Children can be overwhelmed with larger assignments. Help your child set short-term goals. You can ask the teacher to help with that as well. Here's an example of a first grade um, learning platform of what they have due in the week. And I just wanted to share that this is just first grade. So you can imagine what a senior in high school would see online. Um, many children, it's reassuring to know what's coming ahead, but for some children it's overwhelming and they would instantly give up. So this is an example of just asking the teacher, can you just tell, you know, give him the next two things or tell me what the priority is? Because for some kids, this is, is just too much to know at one time. Sometimes they're unsolved logistical issues. These are things that get in the way and make it harder. Solving these issues will make it easier for your child to participate and do their best. Do they have a time and space set aside for work? Do they have their textbooks and other materials that they need? If not, find out how to get them. Do they have responsibilities for siblings during class time? Some older children are in the role of caregiver while their parents are working. 
is there any flexibility as to when they can do their schoolwork? Can the other children watch a movie or do their schoolwork while this student is in class? Can the workload be modified to take into account their added responsibilities? Do they have connectivity and the technological capability to do the work? Can they see and hear adequately what's happening on the screen? Double check to see if they need headphones. Do they have the materials they need to do the assignment? Do they know how to virtually raise their hand to participate and use the other aspects of Zoom? Establishing routines and building good habits is your first tool in getting your child back to class. Now more than ever, your child will benefit from a series of routines which prepare them for the next school day. Just like during the school year, your child's school day starts the night before. Having an evening routine, laying out clothes for the next day, bathing, and having a consistent bedtime will help your child now, but will make the transition back to school easier when the pandemic is over. Even though our days are more flexible now, it's vital that you set up and keep a consistent bedtime and wake up time. Set up a morning routine as well. Routines provide stability and structure within a very unpredictable time. Routines give the child comfort and cues as to what's coming next. Even though the child isn't going to a physical school, set the expectation that they get up, groom themselves, and change their clothes from pajamas into school clothes. This continues to give the message that school is happening. Make sure that there's a breakfast time prior to the start of school, just like during the school day. Grazing is unpredictable and will cause problems later on. Now set up a school schedule and a place for school. If you don't have a home office or desk area, designate a space for school to take place. It can be as simple as having them sit at an empty kitchen table. Make sure that the area you are using is clear of any distractions. Try to separate children who are not working from those who are. Turn off the television and video games. Have your child put away their cell phone during work time. They can check it during breaks. If your child is having online live classes, have the child ready to log on prior to the start of class. This will minimize any anxiety about not being able to get on. Think about any supplies that your child needs depending upon their grade level. Having pencils, pens, calculators, crayons available will eliminate breaks in the work routine. Set aside a reasonable schedule that includes time to focus attention and time to relax. The length of school time will vary depending upon the age of your child, but will be much shorter than a standard school day. Have a signal for the start of schoolwork. You could use music, a timer, something that lets the child know that school has begun. Make sure that you put in breaks and time for exercise. The CDC recommends that children and adolescents get an hour of vigorous physical activity for bones and muscles. Exercise also reduces anxiety, depression, and improves the immune system. If you're not in a location where children can safely play outside, there are many different children's exercise videos available on YouTube. You can also have time for household chores built into the schedule. Breaks are important and the child should be up and moving at least once an hour for older children and every 15 minutes or so for younger children. Build in a morning and afternoon snack, put in the child's favorite activities after work time so that they have something to look forward to when they finish working. Some children don't, just don't feel as safe and secure going online as others. Talk to them about how they feel about seeing themselves on the screen and having others see them. You can have them practice being on screen in non-threatening situations like chatting with a relative or a friend first. Monitor their chat box periodically when they're in online classes to make sure that there isn't bullying going on between students during online lessons. Home is an exciting place to be and a place that most children uh, find very exciting and rewarding. When we're trying to encourage online learning, make sure that 
your child isn't filling their time with more exciting things to do instead of schoolwork. Things like gaming and watching YouTube can compete with the um, excitement of, of being in school. If you can use first this language, first do your schoolwork, then you can go online. Uh, make rules for phone use, that phones can be used only during breaks. Children who are constantly checking their phone um, are not likely to be able to be focused on their lessons. Older kids can be even tougher. Their workload increases rapidly as they're responsible for more classes. If they've been absent, the work due can quickly become overwhelming. Help your child by staying on top of what the to-do list is. Communicate with the teacher if they're overwhelmed and see if the work can be reduced or prioritized as your child re-enters learning. Ask your child what's working for them and what isn't and help them to strategize. For example, if they're worried that they're missing out on texts from friends, set up a time that they can check in between classes. One of the best ways to interest kids in learning is to check and to check for knowledge is to ask them to teach you something that they've just learned. By showing an interest, you bond with your child and allow them to take on the teacher role. This validates the importance of what they're learning, but also requires them to practice it as they teach you. Help your child break down large assignments into smaller steps. We all like checking off boxes when we finish work. It's much more rewarding to finish small chunks of work than to face an unfinished large task. For example, breaking down a book report into choosing the book, reading the book chapter by chapter, writing the report, editing the report, and finally turning it in. By breaking it down, each segment represents progress towards the goal. Ask your child about what they're learning. Show an interest in what they're doing. When you can, relate it to your life. Check in frequently. You don't need to interrupt them. A pat on the back, a thumbs up, and passing goes a long way. If you aren't home when they're working, asking about their work and looking it over with them when you do come home shows interest and gives you a chance to praise their efforts. Give lots of praise and encouragement. Online learning is a new skill that's hard for everyone. As your child starts re-engaging, they're stepping out of their comfort zone. All of their efforts are moving them closer to being successful when school reopens. Resistance is absolutely normal. We all have things we would rather not do. Home is full of distractions and competition for your child's attention. It's normal and absolutely expected that there will be resistance. Rather than butting heads and arguing, try to encourage and praise your child for small steps of progress. Your child may feel a little overwhelmed. Let them know that they can do it, help them get started, and then encourage them that they can continue to do more on their own. Remind them that there are upcoming reinforcers, things that they really want to do. Remember, when you finish your work, we can play this game together. As behavior analysts, we see situations where children are stuck in challenging behaviors and parents are constantly frustrated by unmet expectations. Some of the most important questions we can ask are about relationship building and fun. Become your child's treasure chest. Have lots of fun activities available. We all need to know when and where our next fun will be coming. We want to be a positive influence in our children's lives. If our relationship is full of stress and conflict, this won't happen. Set up activities that celebrate the small steps towards achievements. These aren't things that have to cost money. It can be time with you or friends, choices, special jobs or status, time to use their phone or gaming, special treats. You can bake cookies together, stay up past bedtimes occasionally on a special movie night, eat ice cream together. Not only is this the key to a good life, but we all know that having things to look forward to can be highly motivating towards getting our work done. Don't discount the importance of yourself as a role model for your children. Show them that you're doing what you need to do 
even though there's a pandemic. Call attention to the fact that you keep your routines going. Show them how you're managing stress, be it through exercise, through deep breathing, through music, through reading, um, and help them identify some of those strategies that might work with them. Be kind to yourself and let them know when maybe you're, you've made a mistake because you're just tired of this uh, pandemic. Emphasize doing their best, but not holding out for perfection and hold yourself to the same standard. So let's conquer virtual learning together. I'm going to um, open it up for questions. I'm hoping that that gave you some tips for um, handling virtual learning at home and also as you work towards getting students back to class. This is my contact information if anyone is interested and I will stop sharing and take questions. Tanisa, was there anything you wanted to add to that? I did. So at the beginning, you had listed some great questions to ask. And I think that that's an important point to emphasize is right now that teaming between school and home has to be a lot stronger than it may have been pre pandemic pre virtual learning. And so, you know, it's okay to ask. So you had mentioned ask for for parents own help with the technology. It's okay to ask more than once, you know, don't feel like You've asked once, they've shown you, you don't get it, or your child doesn't get it. Virtual learning right now requires persistence amongst everybody. And that's the child's teacher, that's you, that's the child, that's administration. So I did want to emphasize that point that, you know, you, you brought up a lot of really good tips, but that self-advocacy as a parent for if it's not working for your child, knowing that you have an open choice team, you know, that you can reach out, we can help advocate for you and your child as well. Um, virtual learning is two different sets of skills for kids. So they have their in-person learning and maybe they were great, maybe that worked really well for them. But then we also have um, students that just became high schoolers, they just became middle schoolers, they just became pre-K or kindergartners. They've never, you know, been in that building, met those people. And as open choice and, and districts, we understand that it's it's your choice to have them home, you know, it's an option and it is one that that should work as best as it can. Um, for those that are choosing to do that and, and to just not give up that persistence of asking for help. Um, you know, you, you have a lot, of, a lot of people here at Open Choice that can help you work with districts and you, um, even outside of districts if you need it. But I just wanted to highlight that, that beginning piece is super important right now. And in that persistence, don't let uh, the first gatekeeper hold you back. In my example with my own daughter, um, sometimes it was the secretary in the office that would greet me with scorn, and I could have been scared off from that and not gone and found a teacher. And initially I was. Keep digging until you find that person who will listen to you, because often the people who are the, the gatekeepers that are the first contacts into the, the school don't know our situations and, you know, are just trained to kind of treat everybody as if you got to follow the rules. And if you can get to that, the open choice worker or the guidance counselor or the special ed teacher to get in your story, um, to let them know what the situation is, you're much more likely to get the help that you need. And also, you know, to talk about where you had mentioned the skills and how oftentimes, you know, we, we focus on what the child isn't doing or, or what they're doing wrong or, you know, and, and that's sort of where our human brains go is we're really good at picking out all the things that, that aren't right. But that skill piece, sometimes what they're asked to do is just too hard. Right. So it's so they're they don't want to do it. You know, for little kids, it could be a really bad TV show, you know, and they just want to turn it off and walk away. And just understanding that, you know, 
it's the school's job. It's 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 your job as a parent to pay attention to, you know, can do they understand what, what's being asked of them? Do they understand what the teacher is talking about? You know, are they far behind? Did they miss some skills? And maybe they don't understand that addition or the calculus or the algebra, whatever they're at, but yet they're still asked to go and pay attention for 45 minutes a day. But just, you know, really use the resources available to you to, to find out why. Why is this so hard. Um, there, there's always a reason why there's always a function, um, you know, and, and just right now that that persistence is going to keep coming back in there, you know, because there is an answer, there is something that can be done to make this work for them. There are lots of people who will only like writing paper and pencil, others who only like typing on the computer, reading a book they can open and feel versus a Kindle. You know, it just reminds us this is a whole different way to learn for our kids. So the fact that they may not adapt or they may reject it initially um, doesn't mean they can't be eased into a different way of, of doing it. Other questions? How are routines going? I mentioned the whole pajama thing. I know um, for adults, Working from home, there's the whole joke about, you know, wearing your sweatpants or your, you know, your pajamas all day. And I think they, for a while, kids were doing that as well. Anybody struggling with kids that don't want to get up and get dressed because there's no place to go? No? Nope. Well, you're lucky. Yeah. yeah. My children. Well, you know, it, it's natural. My children hate to get up and go. Yeah, I want to be comfy. Um, but when we change our clothes, we signal ourselves that we're getting ready to work. We're getting ready to do something different. And it's a cue for a different kind of behavior than the behavior we have when we lounge. So if you can get them into that routine of picking out their clothes the night before, laying them out and getting dressed. Now we're going to school. It's just another cue that's going to work thing. for you. You know, it's, it's kind of counterintuitive because you yeah. think, well, we might as well be comfortable. We're at home, but it does signal a different message to your brain. Other questions, comments? Yes. I, 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 my situation is a little tricky okay. because Land from the beginning, basically. my daughter would give me a hard time to get her dressed and to get her going. And the excuse was, you have to go to school. So now it's, well, I'm home, so I'm not going anywhere. And it's just, it kind of puts you in a pickle because it's true. And you still buy into looking really cute from the shoulders up. <laughs> you know, some yeah. hair accessory or some little piece of jewelry or um, because she is going to school online and she's presenting herself and everybody, you know, she's seeing herself, but other people can see her too. So if you can get her to dress, you know, shoulders up, so what I did was she loves dresses so I got her oh, a whole lot of dresses and she just slips those on perfect that's absolutely what a great mom that's a great idea thank you <laughs> oh and you know dresses are easier you don't have to pull pieces together it's a one-shot deal exactly I just made it easier for her just to just put it on and keep it going and if she likes them, it gives her something to look forward to. You know, you're going to put on your dress, your pretty dress for school. Yeah. I'm, I'm That's a great job. Do any parents have some good um, best practices, things you've done to get your kids' energy up? And um, do you do like dances or, you know, something just to get them up and moving? Because I know they're not, even if they're taking virtual phys ed, they're not moving around as much. Is there any? things that you guys have done that has worked? I chased my dog back and forth I down the hall <laughs> before work to get myself going. <laughs> I 
What I do is um, I treat them on a Friday. So if they get up every day without giving me like a hard time, uh, and I know they're probably going to have their bad days, um, I, I treat, I buy like a little thing of donuts on Fridays. You become kind of bribe them, but yeah. That's amazing. You know, a trick I didn't mention to that treasure box is that you, only you have the key to it. So, you know, you want to make sure that they're only getting that reward for having followed whatever you set out. So if you say, we're, you know, we're going to get donuts um, when you go to school, you know, go online five days this week, make sure nobody else is bringing donuts over. <laughs> if they didn't, <laughs> they're not getting them some other way, especially with uh, promising like cell phone or gaming time. Some kids can be sneaky about that. So make sure it's something you can yeah, control. With, You've got the key. With Yeah, with my son, I um, I promised him because um, he's all about Fortnite. So I promised oh. him V-Bucks at the end of the week. That's great. He can't use the game until after school's over. So I try. <laughs> That's tremendous. Because he was really giving me a hard time. That's showing a lot of willpower on his part, but a lot of willpower on your part too, because sometimes it's easier to just give mm -hmm. in. So that's great. Yeah, because I was at, I was at first, and he would sneak around, and it was hard. Remember that part of being kind to yourself. This pandemic has been hard on all of us and it's a trauma for all of us. You know, we've all lost people, time, social events. So, you know, the ability to be with our older relatives. Um, so we have to be a little forgiving right now. One, um, so I have a fourth grade and first grade boy boys and remote learning when they go remote it is some of the hardest days you know and so I just want to I mean so and I'm somebody that should know what to do um you know and I should know what not to do and I do all the things I shouldn't do and hardly ever do the things it's not easy you know even if you know what to do um one thing that I have found is um if you can write out a schedule every day and if you put somewhere, even if they don't know time or even if they do something for you to redirect. So let's say, you know, he's asking about Fortnite and, you know, for my kids, it's, it's Minecraft. And um, but I could point to this little thing that I just wrote up on a piece of paper on the fridge and said, oh, look, this is when you can play that. It kind of you. It, it eliminates a little bit of the verbal back and forth, because I think sometimes as parents, it's easier to, to use words. But sometimes taking that five minutes in the morning and just writing out when they get to have the things that they really like um, can help you at least just not have to continuously say it. Um, but it's not easy. You know, I, I don't think there's a parent out there that's rocking this anyway that, that they would like. I think, you know, last March it, it was novel, right? Everybody was kind of like, oh, look at this. And now it's just, we, we get it. Um, you know, and I really hope that that you utilize, you know, the open choice team and resources at school um, and don't don't give up. Not yet. You know, we there there's always something that that we can do. Thank you. Denise, I love that suggestion because we have to remember the message our kids are hearing is you're going to have to work forever and you're never going to get to play for <laughs> You know, in their mind, the minute they hear schoolwork, that's what they're thinking, even though that's not what you've said. So when you put it down and you write down the times and show them, that's going to stick in their head. Get rid of all of that, the all or none thinking. Yeah, my kid would constantly ask me, how much longer do I can play Fortnite? I'm like, oh, oh my God. Check your schedule. Yeah. Use timers, use anything that you can point to and you know, on your phone, something. So you don't have to keep being that repeating yourself. Because as soon as they get you to repeat yourself, then you start thinking about negotiating. And then next thing you know, they're playing when you really didn't want to. They're really 
Children are probably the best behavior analysts I've ever met. They can train us to do all sorts of crazy things. Mm -hmm. They're really good at wearing us down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I promise I won't take it. Okay. All right, so there's a glitch. I think that the hardest thing for me was the transitioning because usually they're used to school and then home and home was their free time. So the transitioning of school being at home was a challenge to then, okay, now I have to be strict, you know, because, you know, I have to have them uh, get that work done and be like a teacher assistant that's what i called myself and then uh how do i turn the switch off that i'm not the teacher assistant and how can i get them not to be mad at me because they're they're confused and they're in that school vibe even though they're home so that was kind of challenging for me and for them too because um, it was something to get used to. And I had to separate the school, even though we were home, I had to separate school with home and try to get them used to uh, that we had to be home, even though they're in school. Uh, and, and a lot of therapy helped with that too. Um, it's a great question. I think if you can set up your schedule, like Tanisa was saying, where you have school and then a big thing, school's out. Now we're, you know, fun time, home time, and then set that contingency of first work then. And I think where we run into trouble is when we let the school day drag on all day long because they're putting things off. And if you can give them help them understand as soon as we get these things done then it's home free time because that's kind yeah, of I, how real life works with bro, I told you to come and help me and and I feel like in the beginning that's what we were struggling with because we didn't have these meetings and we didn't have the coaches to try to help us separate and not only that to help the kids not be so mad at the situation and um i think that there was a lot of binge eating because of it and anxiety and it, it was kind of cringing to watch um and it was hard to get in contact with the with the school when we were so confused and we didn't know who to talk to and a lot of the grades were going down and it was just frustrating. Um, but I just wanted to mention that. It's scary all the way around and the kids pick up on that fear too. You know, they, their whole world is turned upside down. Suddenly they can't be with their friends and school, you know, they're learning things in school but they're, they're going to see their, you know, the other kids and they're going for the activities and, you know, the, the different routines of the day it's more than just to learn and now they've been cut off from all of that so great great points anybody else i just want to say thank you um you know i, I work as an instructional coach for open choice out in districts oh great um but it's nice to hear from the families and also to as much of like this presentation is to be helpful, I'm learning so much from the parents because the yes. struggles that you are having with your own children is the same exact struggles my husband and I are having with our own children at home. We're both educators, but we know nothing. And it's <laughs> frustrating with the whole delineation of times and the, the battles and the, the negotiation and then falling into the trap of the banter and it's so exhausting and you're spent because you're trying to work from home or work maybe at work and then coming home and juggling all that there is to juggle that it's just it you just want to roll over and be like fine um so it's a battle every day and there's been days that it is fine um and then you can pay the price for it a little bit but 
you just keep pushing forward and we're, the light's at the end of the tunnel. We're going to get through this and you moms are rock stars and you're, you're doing what you can do and you're here on a Wednesday night, which kudos for that because I don't know who, who wants to be here right now, like, but I, <laughs> I applaud you because you're doing all you can do and, um, and there's no right answers. Like you just, you know, you try to set boundary, you try to have rules, but everyone is human and we're all just trying to figure it out. So that's it. Thank you for sharing all your stuff too. And on that note, I think that's a, a great tone to close on. We're in this together and we're all doing the best we can and we need to be kind to ourselves. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, thank you so much for coming. Uh, this has been taped. So for some reason you heard something that you think another parent would benefit from hearing about, uh, let us know and we could send a, a copy of the recording out. So again, thank you and have a good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, guys. Be well. Thank you.